In the last course of this series, when we studied string instrument design, I showed you that all such instruments have a resonating cavity called the body, which gives the vibrating string some fullness of tone. We also studied the harmonic series. In the case of string instruments, this may start with an open string as the fundamental tone, followed by a series of lightly touched nodes which divide the string into higher tones according to a predictable pattern. This is called the harmonic series. The elements of a resonating cavity and the harmonic series are two features we can apply to the theory of tone production in wind instruments. Here, the length of pipe in each instrument represents its resonating cavity, and the tones produced inside that cavity follow the pattern of the harmonic series. The lowest notes in the bottom register of a wind instrument are all fundamental tones. In the harmonic series, this is called the first partial. For flutes, oboes, saxophones, and bassoons, the next register is achieved by overblowing to the second partial an octave higher. The registers above this are played by ever-increasing divisions of the harmonic series, overblowing to higher partials until the mechanics of embouchure and instrument design reach their limit. The behavior of the harmonic series in the case of most wind instruments is dependent on what's called open pipe construction. When a resonating tube is open at both ends, the vibrations form open loops at either end with a node in the center. When only one node is present, the pipe is playing a fundamental tone. The two half loops at the ends add up to one long wave or one complete consonance. When the pipe is overblown with minimum strength, two nodes form within the pipe. The pitch will jump up an octave to the second partial. The third partial is reached by the next degree of overblowing, forming three nodes within the open pipe. This produces a tone that's an octave and a fifth above the fundamental. The sequence continues from there and is potentially infinite, but players rarely go higher than the 6th or 7th partial. The clarinet is the odd man out in this mathematical equation. Though it's also structurally an open pipe, it behaves like a closed one because of its cylindrical bore. This means that the waveforms inside the tube will always form a node at the closed end where the airflow stops. The fundamental tone with an open loop at the end will represent half a consonance. This means closed pipes will produce fundamental tones an octave lower than open pipes of the same length. The clarinet, about roughly the same length as a flute, will produce a concert D below middle C as its lowest note, not the D above middle C. Since the pressure at either end of the pipe is unequal, there's no way to divide the waveform into two equal nodes. The clarinetists, therefore, can only overblow odd-numbered partials, which divide the pipe into multiple half-consonances. The first possible overblown harmonic is the third partial, an octave and a fifth above the fundamental. This produces one and a half waves, or three half-consonances. The next partial available is the fifth, causing the tube to resonate in five half consonances, or two and a half waveforms. This upward progression is also theoretically infinite, 
and advanced players can go above the eleventh partial on some instruments. Note that in cases of both open pipe and closed pipe overblowing, some naturally out-of-tune partials occur and require correction by lip pressure. These basic elements of tone production are universal and lie beneath the tone and extended range of all orchestral wind instruments. The next video will show how they're applied to the design of each instrument as well.